So I'm using my camera's built-in Wi-Fi and then my phone to try to get like an accurate autofocus on my face because last time I kind of failed at that. But honestly, my only really takeaway besides the fact that like the Wi-Fi is great on this camera, it's like a huge handy feature, is that I have a really big forehead. That's my big takeaway from this. Oh well. So something that I've noticed on YouTube is that there's a lot of photography videos on there, whether that's like photo editing tutorials, that's what camera you should buy, or what is the best lens to give you that certain look. And while all of that's really important to photography, I feel like something that is missing, at least on YouTube or just in general in photography, is that there's not enough videos explaining the thought process. So most of the time we see the end result of a photo. So we tend to see like, Yo, it's fully edited, it looks sick. I'm gonna double tap that on Instagram and then I'm just gonna keep scrolling. But every now and then you'll see like a really, really insane shot and it's just gonna be like, yo, like how did they get that? Being that we're only seeing the end result, we don't really get to dive into like a photographer's mindset as they take the photo or even as they edit it. Edit it, edit it, it's fun to say. Edit it, edit it, edit it. Edit it. That was really stupid. So like for me personally, I feel like when I was beginning photography three and a half years ago, like I was just kind of clicking away with my camera and like I had a basic knowledge of what co good composition should look like, but I didn't really have like that concept of like how to take a photo from my perspective and share it because all I knew was just this very cookie cutter version of this is good composition and this is a good photo because I look back at my photos like two, three years ago and they're bad. Honestly, I don't think I really started taking any decent photos until about a year ago. Good photography is a process. It's something that you're gonna learn over the years. And like, while it might have taken me two and a half years to really feel like I was proud of my photos, it's definitely a process that I'm proud of those three and a half total years that it took me to feel proud of my photos. There is no preset that you can just slap on that's gonna make something good photo. But I think that one of the biggest things that could have just really helped me grow as a photographer, especially beginning, was that learning the thought process behind shots, you know, and having photographers that were willing to just talk about that. The entire art of taking a photo is just, it's really, really cool to learn. So that being said, something that I want to do is just bring on photographers and talk to them about their editing process, their creative process, just everything, you know, what inspired a photo? What's the story behind it? Like there's so much that goes into an image before you see like the final product on Instagram, Twitter or website or whatever that like, I kind of wanted to know and like see those stories. Luckily for me, like my closest friends are honestly just amazing photographers. I'm like constantly learning from them. That all being said, after about five minutes of trying to figure out how to talk to a camera, we're bringing on our first person. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Nathan's channel. I don't know how to do an intro, so I'm gonna give it back to him. Yeah, I have no idea how to do an intro either, but I can introduce Peter. That's my boy right here. I've actually known <laughs> Peter for like exactly a year now, which is kind of pretty crazy. Like it's literally a year and what, a year and a day you said? Yeah, a year and one day. Literally a year and one day since I met Peter and we actually met through Disneyland. Peter was a kid in my DMs who thought that I was 25 years old. It's true, I was like, this man's way older than me. Whatever, I'm gonna throw out a DM, see if he replies. Anyways, so Peter is my boy. He's actually a really talented photographer. So check him out at this little, we're gonna throw it in somewhere around here. Bing. But anyways, yeah, so we've been through a bunch of road trips, just even though he uses a Nikon, like, you know, we'll give him a pass on that for now. But yeah, we're basically just gonna have Peter kind of break down some of his like photos and like talk about like the creative process, the thought process, you know, before he took the photo and then like even some like his editing things that he did like, to bring out certain elements of the photo. So first one we got, which we're gonna throw up on the screen for you guys, is this sunset banger at Disneyland. Hit me with it, Peter. So basically with this shot, I was just kind of running around because there's gorgeous sunset going on. And I was like, I have to capture something. And so I was running around spot to spot, just capturing as many images as I could. And then I came to this one spot on a bridge and just to me, it just framed itself perfectly. It overlooked all the water and then it led straight up to the Ferris wheel that was there. And there was elements and the sunset was just right behind it. And it was just hitting all the clouds perfectly. And I was like, this is the shot for the day. I just set up my camera. I was like, all right, I need to get everything in focus. So, you know, set my aperture to 16. This was with the 15 to 30, right? 
This is, yeah, it was uh, 11 to 16, actually. This is before I got my 15 to 30. Oh, shit. Sure. But, like, editing wise, like, you know, creative breakdown of that. Like, what did you kind of, like, want to bring up more? Because obviously, like you said, it's like an insane sunset. So, it was pretty simple editing. This one, I just kind of want to make sure that the focus it led from the bottom up to the, like, the middle of the photo. It's kind of where I want your eye to, like, rest and it just kind of combines perfectly. So, you have the sunset, like, obviously, bright light bringing your eyes right up to that center spot of the photo. And, kind of darken the little at the, the top left of the edges just to just keep your eyes sort of in the center of it and yeah it was pretty simple honestly and then the next one we're gonna hit up is actually not a disney photo it is it's kind of like a shot of what the dogwoods these are dogwoods over the merced river in yosemite yeah for those of us who don't speak nature or like wolf can you like break that down Explain. yeah so the, the dogwoods are pretty unique because they only bloom like for about a whole month in the year and that's in, in may and so this was, uh, I was actually hiking around to somebody with a photographer buddy of mine and she was showing me these different spots that she likes to go to. And there's this one little ledge that kind of goes right over the edge of the Merced River. And it's perfect for you just to set up your tripod and look at all the branches of dogwoods that are just hanging over the river. And this shot, it took me about 30 minutes to actually get because as the river was going through, it was blowing the leaves. And this is actually a long exposure as you could tell by the water, and it was um, one eighth of a second. So it was kind of hard to get it nice and sharp because I had to wait for the wind to stop blowing and allow the leaves to be perfectly still. But yeah, after about 30 minutes, I got this photo and I'm pretty happy with how it came out. In the editing process, uh, I tried to make sure the white really popped out in the flowers because that's the main subject and just have it you know, really separate from each other uh, with the water in the background. And I kind of muted the, the blues a little bit so they're not super punching in your face and just kind of, you just look at the greens and the whites and it just all is right there standing out. Muting the blues was definitely like interesting because it just kind of like does that, like that kind of like punchy contrast where like you really do see like the pop of color between like the green and the white. And then even like the water where like the water splashes are and it's still white, like I feel like those look a lot more muted than like the flowers themselves, which is pretty sick. These are the most compliments yeah. I'm ever going to give you. I hope you know that. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm writing everything down here. Yeah, I'm saving this record. We're going to go to your Arizona HDR banger. <laughs> so this is actually one of my most, like, I don't know what to say, but like, I was just in shock during the sunset. Uh, so this is over in Glen Canyon, Arizona. And oh, we were there. We're, what's that? It has a name. <laughs> yeah, this is Glen Canyon. So it's like right at the edge of the, I just, the Grand Canyon. I just kind of figured this was like called not horseshoe bed, not Grand Canyon. <laughs> I mean, you can call it that, that but curve and, I like to give things the no proper names. You know? <laughs> but uh, basically, for this like location, we weren't expecting a sunset at all because there were just tons of clouds in the sky. It was all just overcast, and we were just kind of going out and looking around. Um, so we weren't expecting much. And as we saw, like the sunset was getting closer and closer to its time, um, we saw just like a little spark of orange, and we we're like, okay, maybe we might get like a little flash of color. But we still weren't expecting much, and we were just kind of walking around. And then it just started getting brighter and brighter until the whole sky was just on fire. And I was just in shock. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have a composition or anything like that. So I was just kind of like running around the edge of this canyon. And I was like, all right, we're going to throw something together here. And I just see this perfect patch where it, the, the river kind of just curves around perfectly. And there's a nice strip of the water where you can get the reflection. And I kind of just got my camera nice and low on the, uh, the rock to get that foreground element leading you right up into the middle of the frame. And so this was actually a, a combination of two photos. So the sky was super bright and the foreground was also really dark. So what I did is took two compositions, one or two photographs, one with the, the foreground elements and the whole canyon that uh, was exposed properly. And I took a second shot of the sky where that had a also proper exposure and you can see all the detail in that. And then I merged the, the two photos together in Lightroom and just kind of balanced all the colors together so it just looked proper and everything. Was that with like, a, that wasn't with a tripod, was it? This was handheld. This was handheld, so you just basically just yeah. shot the same, you really had to like hold it steady and get two shot, two of the same shots, or did you just Yeah, no, I was, just, I was running around like getting all these different <laughs> compositions because I didn't know yeah. what I wanted at first. And I was like, this is all happening so fast, I don't have time to set up a tripod. Yeah. And so. I mean, I think that, yeah. that we were, we split up on that trip at that point. Yeah, you were up shooting porches yeah. up top, and I was with Danny and Emily. Yeah, because we kind of split up because, like, we just 
basically like it's when you have like seven photographers on one trip like you don't want everyone walking away with the same exact shot so yeah yeah, exactly like we were exploring the bridge earlier and like we were looking around there for a nice shot and there wasn't really much and then we kind of saw this little lookout over here and we thought we'd go explore it yeah and there's people like doing all these different things oh over yeah, there, yeah. Like, sitting. dude i was like i remember because i was honestly so mad that day just because like Steve and I, Steve, Carly, and I literally went down to like exact ridge and took some photos right before. And then we were just kind of uh, like, okay, like, oh shoot, everyone's coming. So, like, let's bail and like try to shoot some portraits or something, something different up there. Yeah, I know. We were just and down there. We're like, like, these dudes are missing like this insane sunset just to shoot portraits. And we're like, what are they doing up there? Another thing for me is like, this photo just holds a lot of value to me personally, just because I was with all my like closest friends and. We were just on a trip together and the sunset was insane. Like everything that's happening, it just came out perfectly. And like, honestly, if the photo wasn't that like good when I shot it, it would still hold a lot of value to me just because of the memories I have there. All right, so our boy Peter right now is turning on my post notifications so that he knows when I'm up. You should do the videos. same thing. He says that you should do the same thing. You know, if you do, then you're probably really bored. I guess that would make sense because we're so, in quarantine. Oh, go here and you push the little bell, there you go. That's how you do it. Yeah, so we're gonna add Peter's links to his Instagram down here below. Hopefully that'll pop up. How many, no subscribers, no content. <laughs> so we're not gonna link his YouTube down here, but we're gonna link his Instagram right here. Thanks Peter, you know, for Thank coming you. down here and talking about your mediocre photos anytime anyways that's it for today's video thank you peter for hopping on here and taking time out of your busy day of playing fortnite to come talk so like i said photography is just a really ongoing process uh just like any other art form you're constantly growing and constantly learning and so it's really cool just kind of like look through the eyes of the artist and like walk through that entire creative process with them you know so hopefully i can do more videos like this I'm gonna try to get our favorite bearded man kevin salinas on here next and if he doesn't then i might cry I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully he's here. Next video, we'll find out. Laters, guys.